Hello guys, in today's video we are going to talk about fuse bits on your microchip and how they can catch you out. And to do that I'm going to demonstrate it with two of the boards that I have, the version 4.1 and the version 4.2 control board. So first let's just talk about our two uh, circuits here. So the version 4.1 board, it has a crystal resonator on the PCB. Now the problem here is that the Atmega 328PB doesn't have the oscillator circuit built into the chip. So that resonator isn't going to work because the rest of the oscillator circuit just isn't there. Most Arduino boards you'd see would have a resonator because most of them use an Atmega 328P. So not the PB version, the P version. And that had the circuitry built in for an external oscillator. So we can't use that resonator but when Atmega removed the external oscillator circuit, they improved the internal oscillator. So we can use the internal 8 MHz oscillator instead. On the 4.2 version of the board, I removed the resonator because we couldn't use it and replaced it with an SMD oscillator. So that has the, the entire oscillator circuit built into that little uh, SMD component that you see there. So that will just generate the 16 megahertz clock signal and it doesn't require any additional circuitry to do that. So the difference between these two boards is one is using external 16 megahertz and the other is using internal 8 megahertz. So let's say you have wrote your code on an Arduino and now you've just got your two PCBs back and you've assembled them and everything and you're ready to program them. So you go over to your Arduino IDE. I have two codes here, one for the 4.1 and one for the 4.2. But other than a few changes to the pin assignments, uh, because the, the pins are signed differently on each board, uh, they are exactly the same code. So there's a, they, this should be identical. They should both operate exactly the same. So we come down and we check our board settings. So we want to have mini core selected and at mega three to eight. On the 4.1 we want to use the 8 MHz internal and we want to make sure it's a 3 to 8 PB and that's pretty much it. I'm going to program it using a, an Arduino as an in-circuit serial programmer. So we just go up to sketch and upload using programmer. And the reason I do that instead of the serial is just that I find it a little bit more reliable than the serial. So that takes about 30 seconds to upload that to the board and because we've done it that way we don't waste space with the bootloader because we don't need the bootloader we're going to unplug it and uh, program it again so now if we move over to our other board for the 4.2 it was pretty much the same with the atmega 328 everything is the same except our oscillator so we want to use the external 16 megahertz oscillator this time but other than that everything's same so we just hit upload using the programmer again but this time we got an error and it was that it didn't recognize the device signature. So I just plugged the board in and out of the programmer and it must have been a dodgy connection because now it's uploading and you can see we have the right device signature. So now we'll put the programmed boards into our vehicle and see what happens. Well, as you can see, there's a delay from we send an input to the tractor responding. And our steering servo isn't working, which is very strange because the servo library is a standard Arduino library. So it should work with any of the standard clock frequencies. And even when we try our 16 megahertz external oscillator, we still see the same uh, sort of issues with uh, communication. And it's not even uh, faster than the 8 megahertz. It's pretty much the same. You'd think if the other board was running at half the frequency, then this one should be twice as fast. But that's why these fuse bits can be a trap for young players. You see, we have two brand new chips here and the default clock source according to the datasheet is one megahertz. So that's a lot slower than either of the two clock frequencies that we picked. So the reason that our two boards seem to be performing at the same speed was because they're both still using the default clock source. So the fuse bits are like configuration settings for your chip. So you set them once and you need to use an in-circuit serial programmer to set them. You can't just set them with a serial interface like you might upload a sketch to an Arduino. So if we look at the uh, fuse bits here, we have a lot to do with brownout detection. Uh, 
some of the uh, EEPROM program and things like that but it's the third fuse byte that's most important for us because that's the one that sets the clock source by setting these bits in that byte you are selecting between the, the different uh, oscillator speeds that we've seen in the Arduino IDE to set the fuse bits is actually not that difficult all you have to do is get your Arduino ISP or whatever program you're using hook it up to your board and hit burn bootloader as long as you have the settings set correctly for mini core for example the correct uh, speed the burnout timer and the correct chip all the settings to match your PCB when you hit burn bootloader the programmer is going to set the fuse bits because it's part of the process of installing the bootloader once you have uh, burned the bootloader to the chip you're going to have to go back and upload your sketch again because the, the bootloader will have cleared everything from the chip so just re-upload your program the same way we did at the start of the video I'm going to do that for the two boards now and we'll see if that solves our problem here we have our first board this is the version 4.1 board so now you can see we have instant response from our uh, control board and our servo is working again so the reason the server wasn't working is because when we compiled our program we said we had an 8 megahertz internal oscillator well, actually it doesn't matter if it's internal or external we said it was 8 megahertz so the code was set for 8 megahertz but what we actually had was 1 megahertz so the pulse we were sending to the servo was completely wrong it was out by 7 megahertz so that's why our servo didn't work the last time and here we have our 16 megahertz external clock the 4.2 board and it's also working perfectly with nice smooth control so that's a simple problem that can catch you out if you're not familiar with the symptoms but it's also very easy to fix so now you know what to do if it happens to any of your custom pcbs hopefully you found that video useful if you did don't forget to hit the like button and if you're not already subscribed hit the subscribe button and make sure and get the bell on so that you get notifications when there's a new video uploaded but that's everything for today so thanks very much for watching